We all need it. Safe to say all of us don't understand it. Health insurance full of confusing terms and different conditions. And at the end of the day, it all depends on what's in your individual plan. But in this case, that explains we're defining some of the most common insurance terms. So at least you're covered there. Deductible, copay, HMO, PPO, ay, 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 it's a lot. Understanding coverage, it's something else. This is Anel Trevino. I'm the Navigator Program Director. For the Health Collaborative. For the Health Collaborative. The Bear County Health Collaborative is a nonprofit focused on helping people meet critical needs. Puedo Everything from housing to health insurance and more. Sometimes not just the consumer is a bit confused. Anel has even seen healthcare providers get it wrong. The first insurance term we're defining, premium. It's how much you have to pay for insurance coverage. It's not a payment for any doctor's visits, procedures, or medications. The premium is what they pay for the actual plan. The copay is what they're paying for the service or the medications. A copay is a fixed amount your insurance plan says you must pay for a service your plan covers. It's not the total cost, it's just your portion. Your insurance pays the rest. Well, now wait a minute. Didn't we just say that a copay divides up the cost between you and your insurance provider? Yes, we did. But copay is different. It's a fixed fee attached to usually routine services that your insurance company expects you to need. And typically, your copay does not count towards your deductible. So, if you have a deductible of $1,000 and you pay a $20 copay to go see your doctor for a case of the flu, you'll still need to pay $1,000 to meet that deductible. Some expenses will likely count toward your deductible. It might be like x-rays for a sprained ankle, for example. Those things that aren't routine. Some coverage plans have what's called coinsurance. It's kind of like a copay, but instead of being a fixed amount for services, it's a percentage of the total cost. Every time you see a primary care physician, you're probably gonna pay, let's say $20. That's a set amount. But for imaging, for labs, for other types of, of care, you're gonna see a coinsurance and that's usually a percentage of the total cost. You'll also hear the term out of pocket when it comes to insurance. That's anything you have to pay out of your own pocket. Copay and deductibles, to out-of-pocket expenses. There's also something called an out-of-pocket maximum. It's the most you will have to pay of your own money, usually per year, for medical expenses before your insurance plan then covers the full cost. So once they hit the maximum out-of-pocket, then they're done paying so long as they pay their monthly premium. Your monthly premium does not count toward your out-of-pocket max. In fact, what does count usually all depends on your plan. Sometimes your copay is included in the max, sometimes it's not. Sometimes your deductible might be the same as the out-of-pocket max, but sometimes it's not. Usually what can go into a maximum is going to be your medications, your visits to uh, primary care physicians, to specialists, um, emergency visits. Now let's talk insurance plan types. First up, a PPO. That stands for Preferred Provider Organization. Choosing this kind of plan means you don't need a referral from your primary care doctor to see a specialist. You'll usually pay less if you see a doctor who's in network and more if you see a physician who's out of network. A provider who's in network is someone who your insurance company is contracted to work with. If they're out of network, they don't have that contract. Another type of insurance plan is an HMO or a health maintenance organization. If you have this kind of plan, only services from in-network providers are covered except in an emergency. Plus this. Before you go see a specialist, you're gonna need to visit with your primary and you're gonna need a referral. There's also an EPO that stands for Exclusive Provider Organization. It's similar to a PPO, but in this type of plan, services are covered by your insurance if they're provided by in-network doctors only, except in an emergency. Usually your HMOs are a little bit lower in price per month. But it's important to keep in mind that if you're gonna see a specialist, then you know you're gonna have to visit with that doctor, you're gonna have that expense. So sometimes it's best for the consumer to consider the PPO or the EPO so that they're not spending that extra $20 
visiting with the primary to get the referral. To make medical bills a little easier to handle, you can plan ahead with what's called a health savings account. If your insurance plan offers one, you set money aside to put into your HSA to pay for certain health care costs, which could include your copay and deductible costs. An HSA is usually only available if you have a high deductible plan. And if you don't use that money within your coverage year, you can roll it over into the next year. That's not the case with an FSA or flexible spending account. FSAs are open through an employer if they offer it, and it's use it or lose it, which means you have to use the money you put into an FSA within the year of your coverage plan or it's gone. Both of these types of accounts usually allow you to set aside money before taxes. Here are two terms that get sometimes confusing, Medicaid and Medicare. Medicaid is a joint state and federal insurance plan that's run by individual states. Medicaid, a lot of people just associate that with children. In Texas, people can get Medicaid coverage if they make below a certain income amount per year. For example, a family of four must make less than $59,400 a year to qualify. Medicaid is for pregnant women, people caring for a child, people with a disability, or people 65 and older. Medicare, on the other hand, is all about age. Medicare is usually going to be for people who are 65 and above. Some people under 65 with disabilities also qualify for Medicare, which is a federally run insurance plan. In the end, that's what everything with insurance depends on. Your plan, what your plan covers or doesn't. If you're unsure, just give us a call and we'll walk with you step by step and help you. Anybody can get help. And boy, do some of us need it. Yeah, and let me just say, I completely understand if people's heads are spinning yeah. after watching that. It's a lot to process, but we hope this can serve as something people can go back to, look those terms up, and reach out for help. Yeah, when you're looking at your next plan, look up KSAT Explains. It'll explain all the different technology, yeah. different terminologies yes. to you. It's it's necessary, but it's so confusing. It really is. And it's, you know, we need coverage. It, it helps when you need it, but it is tough to figure it all out. Yeah, I so. mean, co-pays, co-insurance, co-anchors. I mean, it's just, it's all over the place. Well, you got it easy in some of those areas. <laughs> okay, we hope this case that explains does come in handy when you need it. You can always save the link. So scan this QR code to find this story on KSAT.com. And you can also find any of our explained stories on the KSAT YouTube page as well. We'll be right back.